Well, good evening, everyone. It is Sunday, March 24th. I think it's about 9. I'm running a little late. Uh, this, is, of course, is Shooter, and we're going to go over swing trade notes. Um, of course, at the end of our presentation, please do review our disclosures. So let's jump right to the article. My first question after I did my review is, you know, how long is this FOMO going to last? All right, so I'm neutral to bullish, even though Everything's telling me bullish, but we're getting so high on the tape here without a decent drawdown. It's going to come. It's just a matter of when. So, you know, last week we were all driven by FOMC, and that's ultimately, you know, how long does that last? You know, notably, uh, Mexico and uh, uh, um, Swiss National Bank, you know, cut rates by 25 bips. So the Swissies led there, um, and Bank of Japan exited their negative rates. So, there's a little bit of a jogger knot in other currencies besides the dollar. And of course, with dollar strength, most of the commodity currencies weakened against the dollar. Gold notched just a little bit ahead, just shy of a fourth of a percent. And, you know, silver actually dropped about two percent. And, uh, you know, both the uh, U.S. indices and the DAX, you know, were up, you know, better than one and a half percent. You know, bonds struggled with that rate decision, uh, closing a little bit lower on the week, about 4.21 percent. So, you know, looking at crypto, you know, I, I'm, I didn't add the chart here. I'll put it in chat. But, you know, we came right off. It was shallow retrace. It looks to me like we're doing another run. So let me sort of focus on my thought here. So we really haven't gotten a drawdown with this look. And my question here is, is the, does the Fed want us above 105? A lot of resistance right here. So it's going to tell us. If we push too much higher, you know, that should be more of a tailwind. And then we might see continued weakness in U.S. equities. I would say maybe after Tuesday, maybe we do get a turnaround Tuesday this week. So that's sort of my thought on the dollar. Otherwise, you know, I'm still neutral because it's not really hitting us in either direction. Now, TLT, you know, we've uh, you're looking at RSI here, you know, we've got not really a confirmed low because it's higher, but we got divergent lows. I mean, even though that's more of a head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and that is bullish. So there's a number of things, sort of a triple bottom in RSI, which is also pretty bullish. So I think we break above this one, June 25, 2005 resistance at 96.68. Then I would say 110 is viable. However, we break below about 91.98, then a back test of the 2001 lows again are viable. So that really is, is the thought there on TLP. So it's sort of in the middle of the road. It really hasn't gone too much since last week. Okay. Now we had coin last week. All right. Now we've done a little bit of a back test. And, you know, all the volume, I mean, a majority of the volume for Bitcoin has been, go coin has become the favorite child in this whole leg up, favorite child. And I have certain rules I won't chase until I have a back test. So the only place I could really chase was down here. Not enough of a back test for me to chase. No back test for me to chase. Now I got a back test to chase. Now we poked our head above the breakout line and we had FOMC week after that. So I was like, ah, I'm waiting to see, I'm waiting to see. And honestly, I just, with how many, I've been watching chart after chart fail, you know, when I'm, I'm watching like a dozen breakouts, and they were just poking their head about the breakout line and they're rejecting. So ultimately, coin back to 239.16, I think, gives us a launching pad. However, I will say this. If Bitcoin opens strong this week, they will chase this. All right. So right now, my target is up around 277 from where we are, but I'm not going to be that deep. I'm going to probably do 260s and 265s. I haven't really decided for sure yet because I want to get my feel for how much volume is going into Bitcoin, and then I'll make that call from there. But I will post in chat. Um, just giving you a look at the weekly. You know, we're in this building out this flat, but still, I I like the shot for one more time up for that too. Um, and then we're going to see whether this turns into an impulse leg or we do get that corrected leg. So we're, I'm I'm really top hunting here, but I think Bitcoin still pushes. It's the exact same mo as the last three pushes in Bitcoin. Shallow retrace, and then we kept going. And FOMO, once Asia got a hold of it, it ran. So that's sort of what we're doing now as I'm doing this video, actually. So now, Kavana, we got our back test, shallow. You know, as long as we stay above this 83.37, I like it for a shot at 93. I don't want to go too deep. I'm being very conservative. Now, <clears throat> even though coin has, uh, you know, I'm probably going to still do April in coin, probably two weeks out, maybe do three. But with Kavana, you know, my thought is weekly foundation, you know, go back to the basics. Whenever stuff stops working, that's what you do. You go, you 
you, you basically when things are working, you blow up the balloon, right? And when things aren't working, you let the air out of the balloon. So you reduce your position size, change how much room you give the count versus the strike price that you're doing for your calls, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, back to the basics, I always like my weekly options. Let me just express that again. I think I've done it a hundred times now in my chats. Um, basically you buy Weekly calls, two weeks out, right? And, you know, that's obviously if they have weekly options. And, you know, right now I'm not recalling that Cavana does or doesn't. So, I mean, that may be a, uh, one way or the other. But point is, you buy two weeks out, you run them to Thursday, and then you close them out before noon on Thursday. And then you roll out two weeks and rinse and repeat. Or you can wait till Monday. You know, that's ultimately the concept. And it tends to work really well. I mean, it's not a huge gain, but for a starter position, that way you can put your toe in the water and you still have enough premium between this Thursday and the expiration next week. So usually you're not going to have as much of a drawdown as a 50% stop on entry to a long position. So that's the reason I like that for Havana here because, you know, hey, it's it's still basing a little bit. I think by Wednesday, if it doesn't start moving, I'm going to start really small with a quarter position size and then just scale small pieces until I get up to, uh, you know, a half position size. Then once I get my breakout, then I'm going to be at a full position size, just looking at the week. So let me just review that again. So I'm going to start off, you know, with weeklies um, and add on the breakout. You know, so I'm going to start with a quarter position. As long as it keeps working, add a contract, two contracts, whatever, depending on how many you start with. Typically, I like to break it into four. So if I start off with a quarter position size and I am I started with four contracts, you know, honestly, in this case, I'll probably start off with eight. But in, in that scenario, you know, then you, I would add two contracts at a time as long as it continues to work until I get up to my half position size. And then I want to be at a full position size at the breakout. And really, we're only targeting that, you know, what is it, roughly three bucks to the upside. But at that point, it still should be 80 to 90%. So again, I'm slimming down, uh, you know, my outcome, my projection on where I want to be. I want to be shallow. Okay, now frog is another one. we got a breakout line above. <clears throat> and uh, even though we ended up on the short side, there were a lot of people chasing this last week, just like Cavana. So ultimately, everything that I'm looking at has been FOMO trades. So Coin, Carvana, and Frog this week are all FOMO. They're not unusual option activity. I'm looking at open contracts. I'm looking at the flow that was coming in last week. And consistently, they're buying the dip on these. And that's the same scenario with Frog. So I want to enter Frog. You know, uh, spreads aren't the greatest, okay? But... Uh, neither was bros either, and that worked perfectly. So, I mean, just ultimately, I just want to see one grouping of contracts of a thousand or more contracts in the next 90-day window of expirations, and it meets my criteria. In so, other words, it's big enough to play in my book. So, um, at this point, I'm going to target right at 45, right at the money, a little bit here, and then do the same thing as the plan with Carvana. So, and again, I'll post all three in chat, and uh, pretty much let's take a look at what the weekly looks like. You know, just giving you a visual. So, you know, ultimately our target is 51. But, you know, the one thing, the same thing with Frog, Carvana, they, they don't look like they're done here. You know, we're just basing around this resistance band here, this level right here. I mean, that's what we're doing. I mean, we went right to, what is that, 48? Excuse my yawn, it's late. So, but that's what I have for this week, folks. Great trading. Until next time.